in the ever-evolving landscape of animation, there was a time when Pixar stood as an unrivaled giant. The studio's name was synonymous with groundbreaking storytelling and technological innovation. It was an era when audiences would eagerly anticipate each new Pixar release, knowing that they were about to embark on an extraordinary cinematic journey. Yet, as the years rolled on, a shadow began to loom over the once untouchable animation powerhouse. This is the story of Pixar's rise to prominence, its gradual decline, and the looming question. Is this the end of an era? Pixar's journey to the summit of animation excellence began in the most unlikely of places, the computer division of Lucasfilm. It was the early 1980s and a young animator named John Lasseter was about to set in motion a series of events that would forever change the landscape of animation. Lasseter's vision and talent were evident in his work, which included a short film called Lady in the Lamp. This pioneering piece of animation was a harbinger of things to come. However, Lasseter's revolutionary ideas found little traction within the confines of Lucasfilm. The higher-ups couldn't see the potential of computer-generated imagery CGI, in the world of animation. Consequently, Lasseter was unceremoniously let go, a move that would later be regarded as one of the greatest blunders in the history of animation. It was Steve Jobs, the co-founder of Apple Inc., who saw the untapped potential in John Lasseter's vision. Jobs, always the forward thinker, recognized that CGI could be the future of animation. He saw in Lasseter's work not just a series of moving images, but the embodiment of human emotions and stories. Thus, in a twist of fate, Jobs purchased the computer division of Lucasfilm, giving birth to what we now know as Pixar Animation Studios. Under Jobs' guidance, Pixar began to flourish. The studio's early work, including the iconic Luxo Jr. and Lady in the Lamp, showcased not only technological prowess, but also a deep understanding of human emotions. This was the Pixar signature, a unique ability to touch the hearts of audiences while pushing the boundaries of what was possible in animation. The years from 1995 to 2010 marked Pixar's golden age. During this time, the studio was not just producing animated films, it was crafting beloved classics that would leave an indelible mark on popular culture. Toy Story wasn't just a movie, it was a revolution. It wasn't just about toys coming to life, it was about the magic of childhood and the inevitability of change. Finding Nemo took audiences on an underwater adventure that was as heartwarming as it was visually stunning. Up told a poignant love story in its first 10 minutes, a feat that remains unmatched in the world of animation. Pixar's films weren't just for children, they were for anyone who appreciated the art of storytelling. Yet even amidst this creative zenith, there were challenges. The relationship between Pixar and Disney, while fruitful, was not without its strains. The animation powerhouse and the entertainment giant had their share of disagreements, moments when the clash of creative visions threatened to derail the magic. However, the arrival of Bob Iger as Disney's CEO changed the game. He recognized that Pixar's unique brand of storytelling was irreplaceable, and he orchestrated a deal that brought Pixar under the Disney umbrella while preserving its autonomy. As 2010s rolled in, it became evident that Pixar was facing new challenges. While there were still hits like Toy Story 3, Up, and Inside Out, there were also signs of a creative decline. The departure of John Lasseter, the creative genius behind many Pixar classics, marked the end of an era. Pixar's reliance on sequels also drew criticism. The studio that had once prided itself on original storytelling seemed to be increasingly turning to familiar franchises for inspiration. While films like Toy Story 2 and Toy Story 3 were well received, the growing number of sequels raised concerns that Pixar was losing its innovative edge. The 2020 brought new challenges and opportunities for Pixar. The emergence of streaming platforms as major players in the entertainment industry 
disrupted the traditional cinema experience. Pixar's strategy of releasing films exclusively in theaters faced a significant hurdle when the COVID-19 pandemic shuttered movie theaters worldwide. Meanwhile, streaming giants like Netflix and Amazon Prime were making significant strides in the world of animation. While Pixar continued to produce high-quality films like Soul and Luca, it faced questions about its ability to, to adapt to the changing landscape of entertainment. Movies like Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse from Sony Pictures Animation demonstrated that there was room for bold, innovative storytelling in animation. Netflix, in particular, embraced a wide range of animation styles, from the heartwarming Klaus to the quirky Mitchell vs. the Machines. As the world turned to streaming during the pandemic, Netflix became the wild child of animation, exploring uncharted territory and winning hearts worldwide. The world of animation was no longer a one-hero story. Challenges like DreamWorks Animation and Studio Ghibli had risen to prominence, captivating audiences worldwide with their creativity and innovation. Pixar's once unquestionable status as the animation titan faced challenges on multiple fronts. Pixar had become a victim of its own success. Audiences had come to expect nothing less than brilliance from the studio and any deviation from that high standard was met with disappointment. The pressure to consistently produce masterpieces was immense, and it seemed that Pixar was struggling to live up to its own legacy. Today, Pixar finds itself at a crossroads. While still a formidable player in the animation industry, it no longer holds a monopoly on the crown of animation brilliance. The world of animation has evolved and studios worldwide are reshaping the game, challenging the status quo. The departure of John Lasseter, once the guiding force behind Pixar's creativity, left a void that has proven difficult to fill. While the studio continues to produce visually stunning and emotionally resonant films, there is a sense that something intangible has been lost. The COVID-19 pandemic accelerated the shift toward streaming, raising questions about the future of the cinematic experience. Pixar's strategy of releasing films exclusively in theaters faced challenges as streaming platforms became the primary means of entertainment consumption for many. As we stand at this crossroads, one question looms large. Is this the end of an era for Pixar? The studio that was once an unstoppable force in animation is now grappling with uncertainty and facing challenges from all sides. But for those who remember the golden age of Pixar, there remains hope, a fervent wish that the studio will rediscover its magic and reclaim its position as a pioneer of animation. The story of Pixar is far from over. It's a tale of resilience, innovation, and the enduring power of storytelling. As we await Pixar's next move, we are reminded of the magic that once defined the studio. The legacy of Pixar is not just about the past or the present, it's about the anticipation of what lies ahead, the end of an era perhaps, but not the end of the story. Pixar, you have made us dream, laugh, and ponder the intricacies of life. While recent years have posed challenges, we have not forgotten the brilliance that defined your golden era. The magic is still alive in the memories of Toy Story, of Finding Nemo, and Up. As you navigate these uncharted waters, we, the audience, remain hopeful. We hope for a renaissance, a resurgence of the innovative spirit that made you a trailblazer in the world of animation. The legacy of Pixar is not just about the past or the present, it's about the anticipation of what lies ahead. Pixar, the stage is set, the audience is eager, and the world is watching. Will you redefine the narrative once again? Only time will tell, but we will be here, popcorn in hand, waiting for the next chapter of your extraordinary journey. The end of an era, perhaps, but not the end of the story.